。はい The basis for the programming that I'm going to get into is a language called C++, which has grown out of a, a, a series of previous languages about how you program and talk to computers. And as computers have evolved and people's understanding of the things that they might want to do, and、uh, the hardware and the chips and everything, and people have just got more and more experience, new programming languages come along with. New ways of organizing your ideas,、uh, new needs for the programmers, new needs for the programs, new needs for the hardware, and also an increasing maturity of saying, how do we build these really, really complicated things out of tiny little bits? Because at the end of the day, inside the computer, it's just lots and lots of switches going on and off. Racks and racks and racks and racks of them, which is where you get the binary language from, which is just one or zero, which can be shown by something being on. Or、off, and that's what it is inside a computer. And you build on this complexity to get up to the point where you can ask it to do useful or interesting things make images, make sound,、um, respond to input, respond to output, make video, and so on. The C language has been built on a couple of others, and C、uh, has come out of the C language. And C language is hardcore, kind of industrial, it's very fast, which is great. And it's what's called a compiled language. And a compiled language、uh, means that it takes all the instructions and the, the, the expressions and the ideas that you want the program to do. And then there's a compiler that takes all of those commands and crunches them down and spits them out in a format that the computer understands in ones and zeros. So it runs really, really fast. Other languages that you may have heard of, like JavaScript, are interpreted. I, as you write them, they're read and translated into machine、um, language as you're running. So inherently, they're slower. The great thing about C is if you get a handle on how to write it, you can then go and write pretty much any other language. It's a little bit picky in places, but if you just remember it's being awkward, but it's pretty hardcore. Like your nasty grandmother, if you have one, it's a really great place to be able to produce、um, machine art, code. There's libraries and support all over the place from really, really smart people to be able to talk to webcams, microphones, lights, robotics, motors, speakers, amplifiers. So I really, really like it. One of the common things that you'll see is that all the time you're being asked to set up links to libraries and Uh, additional code, and when you start out, that's one of the big errors that you may see as you start getting your development environment, right, where you're writing your code set up. And the thing about libraries is that these are chunks of stuff that other smart people have done that you can take advantage of. Like saying,、um, I want to write this stuff, but I want to access all the knowledge inside this book, which is a really good book. So,、uh, can you link to this, please? So, when I talk about this piece of architecture, or this piece of sound, or this piece of video, include all the knowledge that's in here. Or add this one as well, because I think I'm going to be using a bit of this. And、uh, this book is Why Does It Not Have to Be in Focus about photography? This is really cool. Can you include this as well? And、um, what about this one? This is a time reborn by Lee Smolin, which is hardcore but really interesting. Talking about time and actually it being an ontological problem rather than an epistemological one, which basically means that it's a category error, not a knowledge error. And then this one, which is my personal favourite, about how we design things that we don't know how to build. How do we get away from just building the things that we know how to do? So I can take all of these libraries. And say, I just want to reference the stuff inside them and link to them. I have a program, I want it to do a particular thing, so I can say, make me, actually, it's just a text file. And I'm going to write some stuff in this text file to say, get an image, do this to it, listen to this sound, do that to it. But I don't want to write everything about how on earth do I load an image from a file, how on earth do I actually tell the sound card what to do. So I can link into these. Libraries that other people have written. And at the beginning, I'll just say, 
get this library get this library and then it'll get output as my executable application and this bit is my source code these things up at the top I include and then all I do is I compile my code and it comes out as my executable whether you're on Mac, Windows or Linux. And this is sort of the basis of C++. We just write the bit that we're interested in in the middle and then we go and look and we say, oh, do we need this library to talk to a Kinect camera, to talk to a webcam, to go and grab things from a web server, to process images, to do computer vision. So we include these libraries of things and they know how to do the funky stuff. We just say, can we use it? And then we compile it and we output as our executable file. So that's sort of how we organize stuff. The basic thing to remember is it's like learning a foreign language. We start off slow, we start doing little bits, but the great thing is, is that if you're standing outside a bakery and you know no French, but you want a baguette or you want a croissant and you want to go in and speak badly, it's a little bit daunting. But the great thing is, if you go in and you do it badly, the shopkeeper will know if you go back and give it another go, but the computer doesn't. So you can keep trying and keep trying and keep trying and keep trying until you get it right. And there's lots and lots of ways to go through this process of going, ah, oh, what did I say that was wrong? Uh, why didn't that work? Or maybe just pointing at stuff will work. And we can kind of do that as a voyage exploration. The important thing to remember is it's not about where the dots and the commas and the brackets go. It's do you understand what it is that you're trying to make? Can you draw out the structure of the thing that you want to do? That's the really important thing. And if you understand what it is that you're trying to do, we can look all the rest up about where the commas and the dots and the brackets and all that stuff go. There's some basics that will help us get through it, but that's what we're going to deal with next. So in the next video, I'm going to start talking about the bits that computer programming for artists is made of.